Ah, uh, the shonen genre. Arguably the most popular genre of anime out there. Famous for great heroic storylines, epic training sessions, exciting tournament arcs, power friendship moments, comedy, and most of all, this. Noise. A big reason why I love watching shonen anime and superhero movies is because I've always been fascinated with people's struggle to stand for their ideals. Whether it be for a grand vision, a noble cause, a quest for justice, a need to protect, a drive to survive. These shows taught me the importance of fighting for what I believe in and enduring all the problems that are within the package deal of life. Man, I'm so into this. Among the top battle shows out there like Naruto, Dragon Ball, Jujutsu Kaisen, and One Piece, one shonen anime stands out to break the status quo of having okay to pretty a good fight scene and introduce concepts of battle which change the landscape of the whole shonen playing field. Yes, you guessed it. That one anime I'm talking about is none other than... Um, nope. This ain't it. Ah, there we go. Hunter x Hunter is probably the best shonen anime out there. Just in terms of fight scenes, okay? The battles and 1v1s in the show are... Mm -mm -mm. Not only are they well choreographed, but also they carry heavy dramatic themes that makes the average watcher go for a roller coaster ride of emotions, ranging from pure hype to pure hopelessness. The secret lies on the underlying principles guiding the professional assassins, hunters, students, and martial artists of Hunter x Hunter. What makes this show unique is that it follows a set of rules that have to be respected in battle. These certain guidelines of the battlefield can be found compiled into one superb book with documentation dating 2,500 years ago in China. A handbook to warfare studied by generals and commanders in their quest to be victorious. What do Napoleon, General Douglas MacArthur, Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, and the likes of Mao Zedong, Fidel Castro, and Joseph Stalin have in common? They are all military leaders, yes, but also on a kinder and different world with better circumstances. If they meet each other in the same timeline, they'd probably be in the same book club. The aforementioned historical figures were all readers and disciples of the timeless book written by Master Sun, aka Sun Tzu, The Art of War. 13 chapters of military wisdom instructing generals and commanders how to win battles and subdue their opponents. Principles in this book have been applied by army generals and commanders during the Second World War. Both the Allies and the Nazis, The Art of War has been regarded by many historians to be the most influential book on military approaches, teaching the science of warfare. In some shonen anime shows, even though I enjoy watching them, and I totally understand what they're fighting for, many characters do not follow logic and do not have a grasp of tactic when it comes to fighting, with many of them winning over opponents who are stronger than them many times over because of the overused, never give up attitude and the power of friendship. <sighs> Strategy, planning, logic, what are those? You see characters barging into enemy territory without even thinking, instantly getting beaten up because of their recklessness, brushing dust off their shoulders after standing back up, making an annoying speech about how their friends are important to them, then from out of nowhere, getting a power up or awakening their hidden skill, which they probably didn't earn and have obtained without any real consequences. Then the villains who trained for countless years will say their usual line, No, that's impossible! Before having the lights beaten out of them. Ah. Just wonderful writing, right? Some of you might argue and say, Hey yo Ezra, dude you gotta chill man, come on bro, it's fiction. We have people shooting laser beams, breathing out fire, and punching a hole through industry standard concrete walls without breaking a sweat. And your main concern is the lack of logic when it comes to fighting? Really? And if such is the case, my answer to that will be a straight up, yeah. Yes, it's fiction. And yes, there are supernatural elements involved, but for the viewers to be fully immersed and satisfied with what they're watching, the show still has to follow a set of rules and logic that will give the story sense. Let's put it this way. Would anyone want to see Goku, one of the leading figures of the shonen genre, one of the strongest beings in his universe, getting easily beaten up by Suzy from accounting who hasn't been to a real fight in her entire life? Dragon Ball fans would be outraged because it doesn't fit the narrative and there is no senseful explanation as to why that should happen. I know that there are some exceptions to this rule, but in general, if the show is a battle anime, then the fight scenes, with all their power systems and special abilities, have to make sense and follow a pattern of logic for the story to work. That is when I found out that Hunter x Hunter, Hunter x Hunter is different. The characters of that show use a power called Nen. Nen is the ability to use aura to perform superhuman feats. Yet despite having this supernatural power system, the battle scenes of this anime are grounded with a sense of realism and practicality. There is just something unique about the choreography of the fight scenes of this show. Surprisingly, I found out that there are more than enough instances wherein the characters of Hunter x Hunter have behaved 
behaved and acted under the guidance of the laws of the art of war, the famous book I have mentioned earlier, and that has made all the difference for me. This video will not be long enough to cover all the wisdom and strategies written in that book. So, I took the liberty of making a list of the four principles of the art of war. These are strategies used by characters in Hunter x Hunter that make the fight scenes in that series stand above the rest. Also, pay close attention because these principles are also applicable in our lives as we fight our daily battles. I have divided the principles of the art of war into a few parts according to my own understanding because I found it easier to give parallel examples from Hunter x Hunter this way. Spoiler alert! The following sections contain spoilers for Hunter x Hunter. If you want the full experience, just finish Hunter x Hunter first before going ahead with this video. If you don't mind getting spoiled, well, here we go. According to Sun Tzu, one way to get the upper hand in war or in battle is to trick your opponent. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. This principle is observed in the show with the recurring use of the ability called Zetsu. Zetsu in Hunter x Hunter is the ability to conceal your Nen, which is your life force or aura. When you are in Zetsu mode, the opponent will not be able to know your location unless they can see your physical form. The characters in this show often use Zetsu when hiding, so their opponents would think that they are far away, when in fact they are already close by, waiting for a chance for their enemy to lower their guard before they jump in for the decisive attack. That's one type of deception right there. Here's another one. Appear weak when you are strong and strong when you are weak. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. There are characters in this show who also use this strategy. They make themselves seem harmless under the social standards of that show to manipulate their opponents and also so their enemies would underestimate them. Then when it comes to battle, when the opponents try to attack them, the pretenders will catch them off guard, overwhelming them with their concealed inner strength, falling off like a thunderbolt, getting that easy win. If you deceive your opponents, they will not be able to predict your next move and they will have higher chances of making a mistake. That's lesson one, trick your opponent. Lesson 2. Master the Terrain Sun Tzu talks about the concept of heaven and earth, basically the environment and our surroundings, and how we can use them to our advantage. Hunter x Hunter characters always kept their environment into account, using the structure of the buildings they are in to outsmart their opponents, moving up to high places where they can get the best view when scouting, using environmental factors to give them the upper hand in combat. In Karapika's fight against Uvogin, we saw how Uvogin punched the ground for some reason. He didn't just do this in order to display his immense aura and strength. He did this to create a smoke screen wherein he could easily conceal his presence. Following the rule of mastering the terrain gave him the opportunity to land a hit against his alert opponent. The characters of Hunter x Hunter are sharp, perceptive, and adaptive when it comes to the changes in their environment, and this adds a lot of complexity in the fight scenes. Lesson 2 in The Art of War would be to master the terrain and use our surroundings to our advantage. The Art of War teaches fighters the concept of weak and strong. So in war, the way is to avoid what is strong and to strike at what is weak. The characters of Hunter x Hunter also follow this principle. If they see a much stronger opponent, they are sensible enough to know when not to fight. They're not eager to foolishly jump in at the first sight of the enemy. In other battle animes, the main characters, put in the same scenario, would probably have faced the enemy head on and just hope that the power of friendship and their plot armor can help them accomplish their objective. In Hunter x Hunter though, if they see dangerous enemies who outclass them, this is what they do. Yeah, the only time the characters face opponents who they know they couldn't defeat is in scenarios when there is no other way but to fight. As much as possible though, they try to avoid those situations. The characters in this show also needed to use their heads in order to look for the weak points of their opponents, and if ever they are planning to take down an opponent a lot stronger than them, they make sure they can weaken their forces first as much as possible by isolating them from their strong allies. And that is lesson 3, avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Lesson number 4, know your enemy, know yourself. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Gathering information has been regarded by the characters to be very vital in this show. Knowing the enemy's strengths and weaknesses before a fight could pretty much determine whether a character will live or die. The experienced fighters in Hunter x Hunter do not go all in and reveal their cards all at once. They usually gauge their enemies first, knowing the range of their attacks and the scope of their capabilities, etc. before they go in with their finishing move. The general who loses a battle makes but few calculations beforehand. The victories in Hunter x Hunter are not always determined by who the stronger person was, but rather on whose strategy is more effective against the other. Preparation is key for every battle, and countering the opponent's skills and abilities would lead to victory. Look at this mad lad. Man so prepared, he even brought a shovel so he could bury his enemy after the fight. Talk about calculated. Sun Tzu teaches us that knowing yourself and your enemy through gathering information and preparation can show you the best option on how to proceed with your attack. That's lesson 4. Know your enemy, know yourself. To conclude, the characters use an understanding of the elements and principles of the art of war made the fight scenes of Hunter x Hunter immersive, exciting, and logical. It gives off a sense of realism and practicality to the show, and that boosts overall watching experience for its fans. For number 1, the characters in that show trick their opponents 
opponents and subvert their expectations by pretending to be weak when they are strong and strong when they are weak. They master the terrain, the environment, and their surroundings to get the upper hand in battle. They target their opponents' weak points and avoid those who are stronger than them if possible. And they try to know everything there is to know about themselves and their opponents through meticulous preparation to increase their odds of winning. Indeed, Hunter x Hunter clothed itself with the principles of the art of war. That is why many people think that this is peak shonen. When it comes to fight scenes, this is where it's at. At the end of the day, The Art of War is a book about winning wars and defeating opponents. And I would advocate for viewers not to use these techniques to harm innocent people. Please don't be like people who take advantage of others and manipulate them out of malicious intentions. People who do that suck. Having knowledge of The Art of War is like having a really sharp sword. And the users must be responsible in using its potential. So I urge everyone to be peace-loving and law-abiding citizens, okay? We can use the principles of The Art of War on much healthier applications now. For example, if you are part of a sports team and you are approaching the finals, you can use the lesson about knowing yourself and your opponents to study the strengths and weaknesses of their team. If it's basketball, maybe the other team is good at shooting threes, or maybe, after watching a lot of footage, your coaching staff realized that there is a good way to stop those threes and the other team are weak in transition. You can exploit those weaknesses and form better strategies to increase the odds of winning. Or if you are doing business, if you understand and studied carefully your terrain, the whole market environment, and the status of the economy, it can help you make sound judgment and keep you away from making mistakes. Stakes when it comes to deals and investments. Also, if you understand what your strengths and capabilities are, you can capitalize on those to form an intelligent tactic to attack the market with a strategy no one, not even your competition, expects. Thus, the art of war can be applied to many other industries such as sports, esports, business, academics, and other competitive fields. Just remember to use this legally, ethically, and morally, so we're cool. That is it for this week's video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more uploads in the upcoming weeks. Hi, right, peace out.